Today, I am formally announcing my decision in the shooting death of Antonio Arce, which occurred on January 15th, 2019, by Tempe police officer Joseph Hine. Understandably, this case is of great significance to the community, and this public announcement demonstrates my commitment to transparency in decision making. It is my role as county attorney to review the circumstances surrounding critical incidents involving first responders. Some examples of incidents include an officer involved shooting, a death that occurs while a person is being arrested or in custody, or an incident such as a traffic collision where serious physical injury or death occurs. When these situations arise, it is the responsibility of this office to review and analyze the facts and evidence as submitted to us by law enforcement. We review the facts as an independent charging agency to ensure that the due process rights of a potential criminal defendant or a potential victim are protected. Let me be very clear. The decision today by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office is to determine if criminal charges should be filed in the shooting death of Antonio Arce. Our decision in this matter has nothing to do with whether or not there is civil liability in this case. Our decision does not pass judgment on whether departmental policies and procedures were followed in this matter. Those matters are left to civil courts and municipal administrative bodies. Again, our review and findings in this case are limited to criminal charges and the likelihood of conviction at trial should charges be filed. Before I go any further, I want to acknowledge the loss of life in this case. To Antonio's family, I am deeply sorry for your loss. We do not rush to judgment in review of these cases. The process undertaken by this office in reviewing this matter was extensive. And over the last several months, numerous investigators, prosecutors, and other staff reviewed transcripts, body-worn camera footage, examined photos, and other pieces of evidence. Every single person who played a role in this did so professionally and with great care. It is my understanding that the Tempe Police Department has released the majority of the evidence in this matter, including the body-worn camera footage, so many of you have seen what we reviewed. As county attorney, I also decided to seek an expert analysis of the evidence. I wanted a review that was independent from the Tempe Police investigation that would provide an opinion from an impartial third party. This report, authored by James Borden, was submitted to us on December 31st of 2019. This was another piece of information that helped guide my decision in this case, and you will be provided a copy of that report. The key to our decision making is whether or not we can prove a crime was committed and if we think a jury would convict based on that evidence and the law. Two U.S. Supreme Court cases are especially relevant when analyzing use of force incidents. Tennessee versus Garner says, and I'm gonna read this verbatim, where the officer has probable cause to believe that the suspect poses a threat of serious physical harm, either to the officers or to others, it is not constitutionally unreasonable to prevent escape by using deadly force the 1989 decision in Graham versus Connor outlines a three-pronged test when determining the reasonableness of lethal force. The direction from the court in that case is embedded in police officer training nationwide. It provides guidance to police agencies on whether lethal force is reasonable based on three factors. First, the severity of the crime at issue. Second, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officer or others. And third, 
whether the suspect is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Our own state statutes say that police officers are justified in using deadly force when the officer reasonably believes that it is necessary to defend him or herself or a third person from imminent danger. Based on the facts and the evidence in this case, Officer Hine believed that he was in imminent danger. Officer Hine believed that those in the immediate area were in imminent danger. And that Officer Hine believed he had no other choice but to fire his weapon to protect himself and the community. In a court of law, the state must prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. In order to even file charges, attorney ethical responsibilities are that prosecutors must believe that there is a reasonable likelihood of conviction at trial. The events of January 15, 2019 forever changed the lives of many. And this situation is absolutely heartbreaking. But that day, Officer Hine did not see a 14-year-old boy with a replica. In that moment, he saw a suspect running through a neighborhood with a weapon. In those few split seconds, Officer Hine believed that someone was fleeing the scene of a crime, that they were in possession of a handgun and holding it in a manner where the weapon could be easily discharged. Combined with the fact that Antonio was about to turn a corner in a neighborhood. Officer Hine would have no longer had Antonio in his sights and Officer Hine would have no way to protect the innocent residents in their homes that day. Therefore, I do not believe the evidence in this case supports a likelihood of conviction at trial and this office will not be filing criminal charges in this matter. And with that, I will now take a few questions. What do you say to members of the public who say that uh, if you can't charge an officer who's caught on video shooting a suspect that's running away in the back, then what officer will ever be charged? What I would say to the community um, is that this office has filed charges on officers in the past. And in this case, Officer Hine felt that the danger was imminent when he had a suspect that was running away from him after committing a crime, holding a weapon with his finger on the trigger. What he did was to protect himself and the community and the safety of that neighborhood. When you watched the uh, video, body camera video, what did you get out of Officer Hine's reaction or how he reacted to what happened? When we watched the body cam videos, it was clear that that was a, a fluid and dynamic situation, that the officer had just a few seconds to make a decision on what to do to protect people. Um, and you have to remember when you see body worn camera, it's just from that angle, it's just a snapshot. It's what we see at the time and not what we learn from an investigation afterwards. What about the fact that life-saving aid was not rendered for a full seven minutes? Uh, is there anything criminal about that? Officers have to protect themselves as well. In this case, they saw a weapon on Antonio. And when Antonio fell, he would not show his hands. Officers needed to protect their safety and the weapon was still within his reach that they knew of. They followed their training and procedures. Did the, did the officer see the team actually at any point turn around and point the gun in his direction? How could you tell from that distance that his finger was on the trigger? Officer Hine testified that Antonio's finger was on the trigger and that his, the way he was moving, um, his hand was going back and forth and it was in his right hand to where he could have easily um, fired a shot at Officer Hine. But there was also two witnesses who said they saw um, Antonio's finger on the trigger. All right, any other right. questions? Well, one more. So the gun, of course, had the orange tip on it. Maybe talk about that aspect as well. And it's supposed to denote this is a toy, not a real weapon. The facts as were known at the time was that this is a weapon. Officers can't treat things as if maybe it's a toy, maybe it's not, especially when the safety of themselves and others in the community are in danger. It was only after the fact that the unfortunate information came to light that it was a replica. Are you worried that the fact that so few cases 
criminal cases are filed against police officers in Maricopa County that it might create the, that that this decision might might reinforce this perception out there that the cops get away with these shootings. Well, we take every case on a case by case basis and look at the facts. This office has filed charges against police officers in the past. Um, and when an officer commits a crime, he will be held accountable. OK, Can thank you. One more. Yep, one more. Did Officer Hines PTSD uh, play into your decision at all? Whatever condition um, Ms. Uh, Officer Hine had or, or had subsequently did not play a factor in our decision. The officers have a tough job and we just hope that they get the support that they need.